is underway. Huge roar from the crowd. And first tackle, and that's a good chase, and led by Fielden. And Britain dominating at the tackle. That's what they want from the very first whistle. And that's what we're getting. Well, the Great Britain squad said that they hoped that the loyal crowd would be behind them, but the crowd realised they've got to have something to cheer for. And this is a good start. Can they keep it going? Well, the last thing the Australians wanted, this is Jason Stevens, who, of course, was uh, suspended from last week. The last thing that uh, Britain wants is for them to get the ball out wide early, and the kick down field is on the bounce to Wellens. And Britain with first use of the football for the first time. Not the best kick, they applied the pressure, something that they certainly failed to do at Bolton in that second test, but that's also good defence. Baderas all over the top of uh, Johnson. Forshaw gets the ball away to McDermott. McDermott spun and tried to offload in the tackle. Australians very quick out of the blocks, extremely quick. They showed their defensive qualities as well as their attacking skills in that win last week. This is Chris Joint now, driving the ball in. Kennedy is in there, so too Baderas. It's the fifth and last for Great Britain, this set of six. It's with Deacon. The kicking from him will be so important. That's a belter, and it's one for Price to chase. Wade knows all about this guy and they know that he is a little bit suspect for the high kick and also his defence is not of the highest quality but what was of good quality was the kick from Paul Deacon that is the reason why David Wade no has drafted close, this no guy way, in absolutely from nowhere it looked as though he wasn't going to be involved in the test series at all but he's brought him in to make sure that the key factor in the kicking game is superb Farrell was standing out of the scrum at standoff half this is a wonderful opportunity for Britain Scuffle puts it away to Deacon the pass is out wide it looked a little bit suspect but O'Connor held on to it suspect it was forward they got over it it's Deacon who gives it a bit of width now to Farrell they've got men on the over who celebrates his 23rd birthday tomorrow. Good move, they brought the attack. It all came from the wonderful kick from Deacon. It held high. Price got to him. Fielden, who is just absolutely running himself to a standstill early in the game. They combined with the little halfback. Watch out, Connolly. He utilised the second row at joint. He just sucked in the, the defence enough for Johnson to step back on the inside. Watch Joint come through. Look at the hesitation. Back on the inside. Nothing that McDougall could do about it. They've got the dream start they wanted. Just as they got at Huddersfield two weeks ago. And Paul Johnson, an early birthday present for that young man. And Paul Deacon with the kick that caused mayhem in the Australian defence for Nathan Blacklock. Now then. Andrew Farrell, the captain, 10 points wanted for 100 in tests. Boy, would he love to kick his 40th test goal here on the home turf. He knows every inch of this ground. And Farrell has hit the outside of the post. 4-0. In the first test, some beautiful offloads just like that. You've got to take your opportunities. Deacon dummy half misses out one and finds Skullforth. And Skullforth gets the ball inside to Fielden. And Fielden over the top of Ben Kennedy. Halted by Stevens. Penalty! Well, to be fair, Kennedy looking at the referee Bill Harrigan because you'll see Fielden. He really does not regain his feet. That's not in the laws of the game he really has to regain it before placing the ball down okay this man was all over him well the doubts that great britain had about the fact that it was going to be an australian referee bill harrigan 
As I mentioned before the kickoff, it uh, it would be a positive thing for Great Britain to just ignore the man with the whistle, get on with the job in hand. Line. This is Deacon, Two. Stevens, Brent, Brent, and Brent. Robbie Kearns bury the little man. For sure at dummy half. It's the dream the start that Britain wanted. Senior, almost through. They're getting on with the game very quickly. They're playing the ball at superb speed. They're catching the Australian defence. They've made more advance in the, what six minutes than they did in the entire game until the last 15 minutes at Bolton. Paul Scofford. position. Well, Jason Stevens, Steve, the man who's picked out here, and Phil Harrigan pointing there, and they're all offside in front of him, but Jason Stevens, Great Britain, you know, were a little bit upset that he didn't play last week. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's no excuse, Eddie. He deserved to get his one-match suspension. Absolutely. A lot, of, a lot of people thought perhaps he shouldn't be in, in the, uh, the series, the, the second and third, but Andy Farrell will not... Uh, rush this one that is for sure that's a big kick this for Farrell and they're getting on with the job in hand missed just hit the post with the first kick this a penalty 6-0 Great Britain just what the doctor ordered first test dream start for the British boys second test Australia got off to that flying start Chris Anderson knew that no need for them to panic, though, the Australians. No need whatsoever. Oh, Six still nothing. Plenty of time, don't yeah. worry. They'll be not overconfident uh, either, will the British boys. And David Wade will get the message down to him. But you can see that there's far more aggression already. Absolutely. I mean, you could see it etched on the faces of the British boys as they came out. They knew it was going to be a contest. And here now is Paul Wellens well, Jason, well, starting a Great two, Britain International against well, really? the Australians for the first time. It's with Sculthorpe, who added the... Rugby League Writers Award to his Man of Steel and Players Player of the Year Award, but oh dear, that one was out on the full. Not the he best. He went for the 40-20. Got himself in the right position. Just sliced away on the outside of the boot. And this is the first real opportunity for the green and gold. It is. And they are 30 metres away. Barrett gets the ball away here. And Senior just... Held off for a moment as Gidley took him on, but uh, fortunately, there it was. Barrett now to Fittler. Back it goes to Kearns. This is the first real test of this Great Britain defence. Well, it's obvious that Andrew John, Dan Fittler will control things at the first and second part of the run. Well, that's great defence. Good defence indeed. And uh, Paul Johnson has started like a house on fire. And so a senior. Not happy Chris Anderson. Realise that the opportunity to be in a good position really should have opted for the kick to apply the pressure and squeeze the ball there Matthew Gidley one of the best in the world for offloading and supplying a, a late pass to his winger but the cover defence was uh, quite outstanding well the first borders repelled first bit of danger for Great Britain defensively now then Scothorpe trying to work the ball out again good tackle low down though by Barrett helped out by Brad Fittler Deacon is operating at uh, dummy half a lot. And it's uh, Great Britain's turn who are uh, in the opposition territory this week compared to this time seven days ago. Fielden will get to his feet eventually. Well, it's a ploy that I thought that uh, they'd share that role from Forshaw. Forshaw not the, uh, the quickest guy from the dummy half. And it was obvious that David Wade brought Deacon back in, not just for the kicking also, but the fact that uh, It'll be a little bit quicker in and around the play the ball area. Here's a danger man, Darren Lockyer, but that's a good chase. Great chase led by Scofford, helped out by Fielden. A little bit late there, Fielden, but uh, I must say, Fielden is uh, working overtime in defence. Stuart, get your hand off the ball. And the referee, Bill Harrigan, just telling Stuart Fielden to keep his hand yeah, off the ball. One side, have a look, have a look. 
But they're having a go at the referee, they're having a go at Australia, and that's good. Kennedy. Well, it's amazing that Kennedy's out there playing with a broken, uh, broken bone in his hand, and that's locking Holmes. That's what we want. He is. He's gone uh, for him. What's more, he's, uh, he's got them actually for offside. He's got Great Britain for offside. Well, I said if it uh, meant giving away a few Harry, penalties, that's fair the 10 enough. Meters. Mate, you finished there. You only well, There's eight. quite a few there. It was uh, a delayed eight. pass, but. Uh, Okay, they gave away an opportunity, and obviously the Aussies will take the two. They'll want to just uh, slow the momentum down. Well, every decision that uh, Bill Harrigan makes tonight against Great Britain yeah, you hear me, you hear will be me, questioned Dom, by oh, the Dom, crowd mate. and will be questioned by the Great Britain captain. He's very anxious, though, to keep the players the 10 metres apart to play the ball and it was one of the areas he was critical of Bob Connolly in the first test. Yeah, but to be fair, I, I thought he came under far too much criticism about the second test. Uh, I thought he, at times, he gave Great Britain a pretty good rub of the green. That's a miss. That is a miss from Andrew Jones. Well, well the most important thing... He there's a attack and they've got to be talking to each other. We'll have a quick look and see where Bill Harrigan is. If, if he takes him back 12 or 15, it doesn't matter. You've got to go back to him. And that uh, miss, by the way, from Andrew Jones. There was a goal kick. It was the only the second miss in 10 in this series. Now then, here is Freddie Fittler. And Britain are watching him. They know the danger that he posed to them and caused them last week. They're picking him out as well, but also the defensive line, they're coming in very quickly out wide. Cairns does well though to offload. Here comes Andrew Jones now. Twisting and turning, flicks the ball wide and over the top. And this is young Jamie Lyon, 19 years of age, winning his fourth cap for his country tonight. A prodigious talent for the future. Now Jones, good kick through, looking for Blacklock! He would have had to go to the video referee, Bill Harrigan. I know he's often reluctant to do that, but I just got the feeling that Blacklock was just slightly in front of the kicker. Either way, they didn't get to it, but it was so close. It was beautiful play and a beautiful kick too. But great play by the fullback. It had to be. And here comes Leon Price now for Grey Oh, the ball. that's the first mistake. And that's what hurts. Zero. Dane Carlos swoops on it. Leon Price with the first big mistake of his night. Now, can Great Britain hang on here? They're giving it some width now, the Australians. They've got the man on the overlap, which is McDougal, but this at the moment is Gidley. And that's good tackling, good hanging from the Great Britain defenders, turning the Australians on their back. Ben Kennedy will go down the short side. Seniors after him, comes it back to Gidley. Over the top it goes to Stevens. Stevens to Robbie Cairns. He was missed then by Fielden. Back it goes to Badiris. And Badiris is enveloped by Stoffel. Great Two. tackle, ball and all. It had to be as well. McDougal dummy half. Jones with a little dab through. Look it. Now then. They've got to the screen on this. He will. It's touch and goal. There's not much in it. Was it dead in goal? Was it offside? It was an absolutely beautifully weighted kick. Not even Bill Harrigan can make a decision on this. Once again, it's Johns providing the play. He's onside, no doubt about that. We'll see whether he's got it down, and I think he has. Is it going to be TRY? Beautiful combination. What a well weighted kick from Andrew Johns. Absolutely superb. It looks so easy when we slow it down, but uh, at normal speed, Bill Halligan had to go for it. There it is, confirmation. Darren Lockyer gets the try, his first of this series, his 15th of his international career, and the British crowd a little bit quiet, but it was all down to the Leon Price mistake. And they paid a big price, haven't they? The name says it all. The price was paid, but this is sheer skill. He knew exactly what was coming up in the fullback. Andrew Jones then missed with his first. But he hasn't missed with his second. The scores are tied. It's six all. Fifteenth try for Darren Lockyer, improved by Andrew Jones.
and Lockyer did score in that uh, match last week. My apologies, he did score last week. So it's his second try of this series. What a wonderful fullback he is. And after his performance last week at, uh, at Bolton, he is the best in the world in that position. Now then, Great Britain, not a crisis, but with questions to be asked and answered. Here we are, here we are. And one of them was just asking that same question, Terry O'Connor, of course. No love lost between him and uh, Jason Stevens. He was very high. He got a running Stewart, caution there from ball, Harrigan. Get your heel off that ball. Well, the referee is stamping down on both the Australians and Great Britain. But again, we see the Great Britain defence. They're coming in very, very quickly out wide. And that's what they've got to do. They've got to try and make sure that Australia go down the narrow passage down the middle. They've got so much skill and speed out wide. And they've got quite a bit of skill here with this fellow Johns who hands it on to Medina. That's a beautiful inside pass. Lockyer is on his way. He's got a ton of support either side. Oh, forward, surely. Black lock in for the corner. Referee has pulled it back. It was forward a mile as well. Referee has turned it back. There. Well, that was superb play. The little inside pass was superb to the full back. And Lockyer looked absolutely amazed. But I think when you see the replay, but I'll just use one word to use two words, momentum, momentum rule. Yeah, I understand that. But it was good work from the hooker, Badiris. But this is forward. Well, that's a, that's a toss of the coin, and it came down heads for Great Britain, and he can't believe it either. The momentum rule, I think if you're absolutely and above board, it was not a forward pass, but it was, according to Bill Harrigan. Well, it took a while, it was obviously, he went and had a, a little bit of a look at the uh, the touch judge, touch judge. I don't think he gave it, you know. Yeah, I think he signalled. Did he? Yeah, it was, uh, well, he had to because it was an eternity. We were putting the ball down by the time uh, Harrigan got the whistle to the mouth. Well, that's an escape, there's no doubt about that. Yep. That's controversy. And here come Great Britain again. They have uh, made a couple of changes. Sinfield is on, he's wearing 14, though David Hodgson was named at 14. But there is Kevin Sinfield behind Terry O'Connor. And here now is Paul Scofort with the kick, trying to get it in between Lockyer and McDougall. And that is what he does. And McDougall's got work to do. Johnson stands his ground and with help from Senior, Adam McDougall is dropped to the ground. 18 minutes gone, six apiece in the deciding of the 2001 Guinness series. Barrett, well, get the again. ball wide to Johns, further wide again. There this again, Eddie, you see quite clear away. that the defensive line, they've worked hard. David Waite, the Great Britain coach, obviously realised that uh, they had a deficiency there in that second test. They're allowing them far too much room. They're not doing that now. But can they keep it up for the full 80 minutes? That's always been a big problem. When you take on the Australians, they always seem to, uh, well, capitulate in the final quarter. Johns, and that is right down the throat of Wellens. He used the foot to trap it. This was off balance slightly, so the British fullback comes forward. And uh, Fittler with the tackle. Britain need to work it through this set of six just to steady the ship. They're on halfway here with Connolly. It will be some concern for Chris Anderson, the, uh, the kicking game from Australia, not at its best. Sinfield, here's Andy Farrell, British captain. Chris Joint, St Helens captain. Kennedy with the tackle. Now then, Sinfield gets it away to Sculthorpe. Sculthorpe up the middle, it's fifth and last for Great Britain. And it's with Farrell. Farrell just drifts the ball over the top, little dink, Johns is after it, great ball back to Lockyer. Switches the direction of the attack immediately and such confidence from Andrew Johns here. Oh, wonderful sweeping play there from a little half-back Andrew Johns, it was uh, well read. Oh, that's a beautiful ball, but again the defence is pretty solid. But once Australia start to give it some air and zip it across the line, there are problems. Two. Riles has come on Leon, for Stevens. Pull back, Gary. Play where you are. Look where you are. Maduras was the dummy half. Johns gives it to Kennedy. Three. Bravery from Kennedy, playing on with a broken hand. Midway through the first half, six apiece. It's a contest. 
That's important. This is Carlo on halfway for Australia. Australia quite happy just to settle things down after the initial shock of going points behind. And then it just emphasizes the fact that they're getting out of the blocks quickly, but that's great play. Wellens is there to tidy up the Great Britain. Could have been penalised there, McDougall. Referee lets them get on with it, though. Here's Farrell. Good play Two. by the skipper there. Quick play of the ball. In. To be fair, it wasn't a bad effort by uh, Trent Barrett. He was under a lot of pressure. Peacock. Had a quiet match Three. last week Three. after his uh, exploits with the opening try at Huddersfield. The Here's did. Connolly, who has had a brilliant series, to be fair. Four. To be fair, they all did last week, Eddie. Yes, they did. And they knew they had to... Uh... Some, some Steve were a little more quiet than others, though. OK. Oh, oh that was never on. Again, they've come up with a mistake. That's the second one. O'Connor tried to get the ball away in almost impossible situation. Yeah, tackle one. Andrew Johns Let takes go. the first tackle. You here. cannot try to squeeze the ball there. There were three men in attendance. Believe you me, this Australian side, their counterpunch is wicked. Riles met by Fielden. That's Magnificent three. so far, Fielden. Badiris, Johns, Barrett up the middle. Peacock's after him, so too, Sinfield. Four tackles gone, two left. This set of six, Fitler dummy ha. Wide to Cairns, up the middle. That'll be the fifth and last. Now then, what have Australia got here? They're lining up both sides. Will it be a one-pointer? Which way will they attack? Johns is there. He's going to hoist the kick out wide. It's a test of this. And I think Johnson caught that ball in touch. He did. He came from the field of play. If he had his foot on the ground, it would have been the other way around. He knows he's made a mistake, but uh, I tell you what, you haven't got much time to hold a board meeting. No, you you haven't. That's true. Take a break. Take a break. He was one of the best in the business uh, on the high ball, Adam McDougall, and he was applying the pressure. Might have got out in the fall, but uh, Johnson couldn't take the chance. So now then, huge, huge test of this British defence coming up again. Because the Aussies have head and feet at this scrum, ten metres out. But you've got to go back to the fact that it was Price came up with a mistake, Australia got their first try. O'Connor has come up with one now. Barrett! Great tackle. Wonderful tackle from Skullthorpe. Here's Fittler attacking the line. Fittler! And he's just dragged back by three. Peacock was the last one to apply the pressure. And Skullthorpe was there again. But Dennis Connolly went for the interception. The ball was bounced kindly for the Aussies. It's going to be six to go. That was a huge gamble there from Connolly. He's done it so often in the past. He's not signalled the referee, Bill Harrigan. Well, I was definitely touched by Connolly, surely. Get on the line, Andy. Get on the line, Andy. You're on the side. Don't go into it. This is Johns. Back it comes to Cairns. Last tackle. He didn't wipe them down. He didn't wipe the tackle count down. Baderas off the ground. Johns, short ball. Great tackle. Chris leading the way yet again. That's got to be the turnover. Blacklock didn't realise it. Well, I think he, like us, thought that Connolly got a fingertip to it. And the tackle count had been wiped down. It hadn't. Well, that's a mistake, Marcus I feel, from Bill Harrigan. Two and one. We've mentioned already that uh, the British have had the rub of the green so far, and I still think it's continuing. Riles all over the top. This is O'Connor. In my way. Battling on bravely, the, uh, the Wigan boy, the Irish captain in the World Cup. Here's the English captain in last year's World on, Cup. Not, 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 not. Tackled by Kennedy and Riles. Tell you what, Robbie Cairns felt that. He was a bit sluggish getting back on the 10. Scothorpe's gone for another big one. It's out on the full again. Well, he's trying for 40 20s and not coming off. Yeah, well over the whitewash, and he knows it as well. David Waite, fully aware, two mistakes, uh, kick directly in a touch, puts him under pressure, two drop balls, puts him even under more pressure. No way, Six so all no though, way. 25 minutes gone, thereabouts, Sean McRae, wonderful test match. Oh, the game of the series without doubt, Eddie, fantastic game, great intensity, the pace of the game is outstanding, both sides are really starting to deep, uh, breathe very deeply at the moment. Uh, Great Britain, great start, had the momentum early on, Australia came back. Interesting to note that both tries have come direct from turnovers 
in crucial positions. And uh, that could well be the outcome of the game. Something like that could determine this outcome. Australia examining the defence again with John's lovely ball. Oh, and lovely defence from Great Britain. No way through for Fittler. Badiris off the ground quickly to Lockyer. That's a lovely ball. That and that's going to be six to go. Got to be. He's certainly got that right. No foul, oh, but dearie me. Well, Bill Harrigan. Crossfield kick from Johns looking for McDougall. McDougall flicks it back to Kennedy. Kennedy, inside it goes. Ball flicked up again. That'll and be the turnover. It's gathered in by Brad Myers, and that's the turnover. Well, did they touch it again out there on the far side? Great Britain, that's the well, question. I'm sure they got a fingertip to it. No. Well, he didn't play at it. Directly didn't uh, the British skipper Andy Farrell, but... Uh, well, that certainly would have been deemed as a, either a knock-on or at least go back to the six. Well, if any of the British fans here have any complaints about uh, Mr Harrigan, <laughs> they've got to feel a little bit sorry for the Australians because they're on the back foot. You're joking. No, I'm telling you. Nobody in this ground with a Britain jersey on and with British blood coursing through his veins will feel sorry for the Aussies. Deacon with the kick. 4-1-2. Into the arms of Blacklock, who says he dedicates this test match to his late father. Died uh, not too long ago, uh, tragically, and uh, Nathan Blacklock said that he was ready to give the game away at one stage, and his dad said to him, just keep on going and eventually the rewards will come. They've come tonight and this test match is dedicated to his father. Well, I'm glad he's got a good start as well. He's been uh, the top try scorer for the last three seasons down under. Certainly deserves his opportunity. Here they come. Barrett, oh, beautiful ball to Kennedy. Kennedy has got support with him. And the support has arrived from Gidley. And they're over despite the attention from Johnson. Gidley gets the try. <laughs> there was a beautiful inside ball there, though, to Ben Kennedy, who's playing this match one-handed. And Gidley over. Try number nine internationally for Matthew Gidley, the Newcastle Knight. Well, a quality here. Look at that pass from Trent Barrett. We've seen him throughout the season. Sky viewers, the NRL, we've been getting it each week. And this is absolutely superb from the standoff. See how he sucked in the British skipper. And Kennedy has kept his cool. Gidley, he knew he was going to get over the line. He had the pace. The inside pass has created havoc in the, the British defence at the moment. That try fashioned in Newcastle in Australia. Kennedy and Gidley, two grand final winners of course. And now here is Andrew Johns, another Newcastle Knight, to try and add the extra. The British waving their flags behind the sticks, trying to do their best to put him off. The post for him. A big grin. Right. He is seven a Siva. Peacock after him with Skullfall. Madeiras, he is Myers. Pretty important now that Britain just try to close them down. You just get the feeling that uh, the heads may just go down somewhat if Australia can snare another try before the half-time break. Big that, booming kick, that. That's the best from Australia so far, and the chase is great. A little misty out there, just wonder whether it's uh, starting to drizzle a bit. It's pretty wet at the moment, Eddie. It's been raining uh, about the last six or seven minutes. Well, that won't do anything for the handling skills, but... Uh, Let's hope it's British rain. Farrell. This is for sure. It's a long way to come from Australia, Eddie. <laughs> it could come over on the wind, you never know. Sinfield to Scullthorpe. He's gone for another big one, but uh, this is not the best. And Lockyer has got 30 metres to pick up pace and attack. And down goes Stuart Fielden. But luckily for Great Britain, the captain and uh, Keith Senior were there. And the fullback takes the tackle. Johns to McDougal now. On halfway, McDougal just gets into British territory. Well, you can see that the turf there is uh, cut very, very low. It's a bit threadbare and it's starting to cut up. 
Jones gets uh, it wide to Fiddler. Fiddler gets the ball away to Myers. And Peacock just managed to haul him down, but uh, Fiddler is starting to tick as only Freddy Fiddler can. Jones with a little, little dink over the top. That's in touch. And uh, Jamie Lyon claiming that it came off no, the British player. He's claiming that it was obstructed. Neat little kick over the top, and you'll see Price there. If you're both running for the ball in the same direction, it isn't within the rules you can use your shoulder. And that is exactly what Leon Price did. And the youngster, not happy with the decision from the referee, but has got it right. Can't grab at him, of course, but uh, you can utilize the shoulder, providing you're running in the same direction. Well, the forwards running themselves to water. Well, it's what they needed, and they certainly had taken it to the Australians. Good ball to Anderson from Deacon. Eight minutes to half-time, just six points the difference. What a change from seven days ago. The match was over this time last week. It's very much alive and kicking at the moment. Well, Great Britain have to utilise perhaps a little chip over the top. They've got to come up with something different. Oh. And they went backwards, so it'll be uh, the Great Britain head and feet. Kennedy, not surprisingly, coming uh, did go backwards, came off the back of uh, Wellens. Yes, it's Great Britain's head and feet here. And that's a let off. Kennedy was well and truly away, and uh, of course, it was Wellens that had linked through, so there was no one at home in the full back position. Deacon to Sculthorpe and wide to Wellens. Done well, the St Helens full back. So is the Bradford scrum half, and the possession is swinging Australia's way gradually. Just at the moment, Britain, having started off uh, like a house on fire, are just struggling to get across this defensive line. Well, it didn't help with the fact that uh, two of the kicks from Sculthorpe directly in a touch, the two mistakes. You've got to try to be out of free if you're going to beat the, uh, the Australians, that is for sure. Fielding almost through, this is Sinfield, here is Forshaw, Forshaw looking to offload, and hangs on, and the huge pressure from Trent Barrett, Deacon, that's good play, Ooh, Ooh, that was four, yeah. two. they've got away with it, here's Price, kick over the top, Deacon's after it, but here is there to tidy up for Australia, that's a great chase though, wonderful chase by Kevin Sinfield. And they got away with the forward pass, not seen by the official Harrigan. And uh, it was a good kick eventually from Leon Price. Now it's important they've got to keep Australia camped down. Remember, Takiri went 60 metres from uh, this particular position. The Australians are past masters of attacking from deep within their own quarter. That's what they're trying to do here. Just uh, 10 metres inside their own half with Brad Myers, Scothorpe and Deacon around him. That's the fifth and last. Good defence from Great Britain here. Expect the kick from Johns. There it is. And it bounced off Kevin Sinfield, took the sting out of it. So Johnson picks up and gets away from Andrew Johns. Can't get away though from Gidley. You can see the players sliding about all over the place now. Here's well, Wellens. Will both camps be looking at the fact to change the length of the studs? Quite a few went out with short ones to start this game. Beautiful inside pass as well. Sculthorpe, Sculthorpe the provider. Can they make it count? Deacon controlling things out there at the moment. And he's in possession here again. He's given it to Big Paul Anderson, who drives over the top of Ben Kennedy. It's the fifth and last. Sinfield, Sculthorpe attacking them. A stab through for Senior to chase. Desperation stuff from Darren Lockyer. Senior closing in good option well way to kick as well senior thundered into the advertising hoardings and he's hurt oh 
Oh, that was superb play, wasn't it? The offload. The big fellow was through and just slips at the vital moment. You can see Price coming in on the angle. And then we've finally got the kick away. But this fellow's been around long enough. He reads the game ever so well, doesn't he, Darren Lockyer? The, the obvious thing, no one rushing around with it. Looks like that uh, Senior's picked up a bit of a knock as he slithered into the hoardings. Deacon feeds O'Connor and back come Britain again. The pace of this test match is unrelenting. Forshaw's pass was dubious to Anderson. Well, Britain are utilising the right tactics. They're keeping it pretty tight. They're just trying to make sure that they go through the sets of six. Senior offloads to Sinfield. Sinfield it goes wide to Scalfall, further wide to Peacock. Here is Wellens. Ready well though, leading the way. Brad Fiddler knew the ball was coming back on the inside, squared him up. Bang! Connolly in the deck. Gary Connolly, but here's Scalthorpe now. Four tackles gone. Deacon, they come wide to Foreshaw. Back it goes to Deacon. There's Andy Farrell. Kennedy was waiting. As always, he really has shadowed Andy Farrell today. Deacon holds the kick. I've seen in wet conditions. It was knocked back by Price, and he takes that. He came off Price, the referee got it right. Yes, he wasn't offside, and it wasn't a knock on. He took it on the half volley. Everyone here thought it was. David Wake was with you, but it came off Price. Look at that. That is a wonderful take from Andrew Johns. This is seven a Siva now for Australia. Well, we talk about the attacking skills so often, don't we, about Andy Johns, but he does his work in defence, and when he's, he's called on to come up with something different, he certainly did then. This is Johnson, he's away from Myers, but he couldn't get away from Blacklock. Scalforth, a dummy hard. Here is Leon Price. Leon Price trying to open them up down the middle. David Wake making his way down to the dressing rooms as Connolly takes them on. Flicks the ball back to Price, they change direction to Deacon. And Deacon, lovely little run from Deacon, offloads to Wellens. The Australians though funneling him up the middle and the tackle completed by Bradley Myers. Great work by the little half, Paul Deacon there is enjoying himself. Good so, switch back in the inside from Sculthorpe. To O'Connor. And the two halfbacks, Eddie, really are starting to combine. Oh, he just couldn't offload there, Sculthorpe. Medina's over the top of Sculthorpe. Last tackle here for Great Britain with Farrell. Another little tester out wide. Price is after this. Price is Oh, he had it and then lost it. It'll be the knock on. Fittler wasn't taking any chance at all to be accused of being offside. He had that in the bread basket and I'm afraid the wheels fell off. That is a golden opportunity. Just absolutely missed. He's picked up a knock. I think he's, uh, he's winded, uh, Leon Price. Just lost it at the vital moment. Inside the last minute here at the JJB Stadium, this deciding test match of the 2001 Guinness Series and going right the way down to the wire. 12-6, Australia in the lead. Well, important set of six here for Great Britain. It would have been an absolute wonderful boost for them, but at least psychologically, they can go in at half-time knowing that they're starting to find the holes in this uh, Australian defence, and they realise that uh, Australia do have a problem on their left wing. They're attacking Nathan Blacklock, and we saw on that occasion, Price took the ball and then lost it. Missed opportunity. Medeiros up the middle. Halted by Kevin Sinfield, who's right in the middle of the ruck. Could have been penalised there. Now then, here is Dane Carlaw. Good tackling low down by the British captain, Andy Farrell. Last tackle here for Australia. Johns with a dink over the top. Wellens has read it, has he? Oh! Wellens, his, my heart was in the mouth. And Wellens knew exactly what he was doing. There is the half-time siren. 12-6 Australia. Magnificent first.
first half. McDougall picked up off the deck. He'll get into the dressing room and he will gain wind for the second half as all these players will. Eddie, and let's hope that uh, this capacity crowd will be able to say in years to come, I was there, but it's not going to be easy. I mentioned uh, midway through that first half that so often in the past yep, a false one, dawn has arrived for Great Britain and in the last quarter Australia always seemed to have the ability, the fitness Tackle and the skills to just on. rip us apart late in the game. Let's hope that we can hang in for the 40 and get those six points back very quickly indeed. Sivinasiva could have been penalised for a flop then as Peacock was on the ground but uh, Mr Harrigan thought other than that. In centre field it's McDermott, Sinfield off the deck to Scothorpe, he goes for another boomer downfield, this time though Crossfield and uh, bouncing aimlessly really into the arms of McDougall, Deacon is there, Deacon's missed him, McDougall on a flat run, Sinfield gets to him, scraps yeah, him to the floor, one. not great the kicking from Scothorpe tonight. Uh, a little bit off form but uh, it was a good option to go across to McDougall, it was McDougall as we saw in the uh, the shots in the Australian dressing room, he was having a lot of treatment. He limped off get up, the get first up. half. And it's all about applying that pressure. Can they force Australia to come up with those mistakes? Remember, it was the many mistakes that Australia coughed up that gave Britain the great opportunity when they won the first test. They've got to do it again. Oh, what a ball from Jones to Barrett. Barrett has got Myers inside him, and it's a walk-in try for Myers. script for this second half. Britain off to a flyer at the start of the game. Australia in the shape of Brad Myers. The Queenslander from the Brisbane Broncos who gets first blood second half for the Aussies. Superb offload there. And Barron did ever so well. The two halfbacks combining. John's providing the pass. Look at this. Sheer quality. John's just held it, sucked in the defence, back on the inside, and Myers got a wonderful season down under. That is a great try. Fabulous try for Brad Myers. The year started off so well for St Helens against Myers and Brisbane in January. And uh, that is just a, a major setback to Britain's chances here at Wigan tonight. Exactly the opposite of David's Waits wishes for the start of this second half that his side play for field position try and pin the Aussies down in their own territory and force the mistake and come up with the error and then capitalize on it and a look of uh, disappointment on the face of the Great Britain coach there because that is exactly what he didn't want to see Australia getting an early initiative in this second half as Wellens is pinned back there by a great Australian chase and that is exactly what the Aussies wanted really get in the face of these Great Britons at the start of this second half and they've done just that. Wonderful kick, wonderful chase, Britain near their own line, Scotthorpe trying to drive them away from the danger zone. Now it's with Connolly, it goes wide to Farrell, Britain are running it here. Well spotted, he was well spotted there by Barrett, who delayed that past it, Farrell. And Barrett was not going to be sucked into it. That's the last one, that to be a good kick here from Deacon. Under pressure from Badiris, he got the kick away. And he splits a Lockyer and Blacklock. And uh, Lockyer facing his own line, fumbled with it. The chase is a little sluggish. Here's Blacklock. Price doing well. Who's lost that? Probably classified as a knock on, but really Price gets it from the He scores. It's a decision for the referee and the touch judge. He's going to give it. He's going to give this. No, he isn't. He's going to let the video referee have the final say. You're checking this thing, whether he Blacklock tried to offload this ball, I feel. He was still moving, so therefore Price had every right to keep it going. He tries to get it back, and Mystic. then it, it oh. comes off Lockyer. And maybe Scofield. Well, this is the incident. 
Lockyer misses it, Sculthorpe knocks it forward. Well, I've got to go for a no-try, I've got to go for a knock-on from Sculthorpe. But will it be the first knock-on? No. Well, why on earth Blacklock tried to offload, is anybody's guess. And was it a knock-on from Lockyer? Well, it's a real schmozzle out there, the video referee. Well, did, way. The, did Paul Sculthorpe intend? We were talking about intention earlier on. This is a big call from David Campbell. Did he intend here, Paul Sculthorpe, to uh, to flick this ball forward, to, to make a play for the ball? Well, so often in the past, you can see it comes off the forearm of, uh, or the upper arm, should I say, of Lockyer. So I'm going to go for a head and feed. But uh, okay. well, it's going to be a difficult decision. Oh, go on, I'll go for TRY. Well, well, don't put your house on it, Steve-O. David Campbell has... Uh, had a look, and now the decision, and they get the scrum to the attack. That's a, a bitter blow. Well, David Waite thought that perhaps if that was the case, how on earth could he have been there? But they've gone to the first knock-on. First knock-on, yes. Yeah, they've deemed that Lockyer knocked on, and then Sculthorpe knocked on. Therefore, he's somewhat bemused as David Waite, but to be fair, I think the video referee has got it right. Great Britain to put some pressure on. They're going to get possession from this scrum. Deacon to Farrell. Here is Connolly trying to burrow his way underneath the Jamie Lyon. There's a real ding dong. And it is going on like you wouldn't want to believe. They're coming in like swarming ants. Some are trying to stop it, others are trying to get involved. Well, I hope the referee and his touch judges. Uh, Took a good look at that. Well, Sculthorpe is going absolutely bananas. He is in there as a peacemaker, the water carrier. Robbie Cairns was uh, eyeball to eyeball. It was after the scrum man uh, broke up. It might have been uh, Mr. O'Connor and Mr. Riles involved in all of this. Two men with uh, 17 on their backs. Fred. Well, O'Connor's not locked into the scrum there. He is now, now he is. And and someone just has a little look, and while he's having a little look, someone has a push. Well, you can't see it there. By the way, okay, someone got a headache. Could be a penalty for Great Britain. 17. I think they're both on their way to the bin, maybe. 17. Jason. 17, you Barry? Who's 17? 21. <laughs> Who's 17? Said Bill Harrigan to Terry O'Connor. He said, I'm 21. Was it Barry? Was it Barry not talking about his age. Barry. And I think at 21, he'd. Uh, but it's not. Just listen to him. That's my tell me, tell me, tell me. Okay, well. Well, I, I think Terry O'Connor feels that. Uh, the first I think I've got away with this. Just okay. That's out. He threw the first punch. First punch. Yeah, penalty. Great punch by Riles. Well, we've got to take the tap. It's no good. Oh, he's going for the two. I would have gone for the momentum. Well, take two that's on offer, I suppose, at this stage. Plenty of time left. Well, I'm not so sure that they've uh, come up with the the best decision. I think they got uh, mistaken identity. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, anything else, but, by uh, the way, Great Britain have got the chance for two points, but yes. uh, I think I would have, uh, especially after they've had a little bit of Take a fisticuffs there, uh, just put a bit of seed of doubt into the Australians, I would have been uh, tempted to push it, push the opportunity and uh, go for the six rather than the two. Saw a few of the old masters on the screen in our uh, build-up to this test match, and uh, a lot of the old masters say it ain't a test match without a fight. Farrell's added two more points to Britain's total, though, as a Barry, result of all that. Barry, the gap is ten. Well, you can have a, a fight without having a, a punch-up. It doesn't have to be handbags at six paces. It's, uh, Bill Harrigan is pointing at Barry McDermott and telling Andy Farrell to tell him to calm it down. And McDermott's under pressure now. I don't know if there was anything that he was involved in, frankly. Anyway, the gap is closed. And we're back to the Rugby League. Deacon. Here he comes, McDermott. Oh! Shot from McDermott just shook his head as though a wasp had 
just gone by him. And Myers is down and asking for treatment. This is going to get warm. This is it. That was a high shot. No doubt in my mind. And that's the reason why I would have gone for running with a football. Well, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see what happens and develops here. It's with Deacon. Farrell! their teeth and the Australians now trying to work the ball away from their own line with Sivanasiva. That's the fifth and last. Well, it looked like Britain were in. We're done! Johns, it goes wide. Barrett with a big hoof downfield. Oh, that's a great kick. Super kick because uh, Paul Johnson is hurt and Wellens had to funnel back and pick it up. And Barrett leading the way. a fingertip to it. So you're saying Gary Cooper Well, I hate to on. argue on our last assignment of the year, but this will be no try. It, you've got it right. <laughs> <laughs> it grieves me to say it, but no try. So close. Well, they're inching closer and closer. What, what a first try that would have been. So vital in the situation. Only ten points between the two sides. Two fantastic breaks from Leeds. Keith Senior set them up. Here's Barry McDermott again. Chris Joint. The Aussies on the rack here. Two. Britain have to score. Senior again. Inside it comes to Deacon. Now to Terry O'Connor. Three. 20 metres out, Great Britain. Three tackles gone. Three in the bag. Deacon comes wide to Skullthorpe. And he would drop the shoulder a little dummy. Oh, he lost that. Hitler. He lost it and got it back. Brigada did it hit the deck. Sinfield to Farrell. Farrell! Andy Farrell! Oh, he hung on to him, did Kennedy. That's got to be a penalty. The fullback was all over him. A dab over the top. <laughs> Diffused by McDougal. Well, what a game Adam McDougal is having. He was injured. He limped off for the half-time break. And Farrell gets through. 
And it was Kennedy that came to the rescue. And it's McDougal that came through when they finally got the kick away. Ben Kennedy just on, and what an important tackle that was on Andy Farrell. Well, they've been across the line twice, Great Britain, and denied each time. Three. We are quick. Joint with the tackle on Jason Riles. Baduras goes to the right with Barrett. And Farrell with a very important tackle. Here is Stevens again. He drives it in at Deacon. Every time Jason Stevens has had hold of the ball tonight, the Wigan public let them know, let him know what they think of him. It's now with Fittler. Why to lock your good hands? Good hands again. Top. How much opportunity he's got. Plenty of speed as this guy. It's the turnover because it was not played at by Jamie Peacock. In here, Terry. Peacock certainly you going for the man. The ball made in here. Right. The opportunities for Nathan Blacklock. And again, problems for Price. Yes, Leon Price hurt once more. That's one. Hodgson's yeah. on for the injured Paul Played Johnson. Now then, David Hodgson, yeah. cometh the hour and cometh the man. Wellens, Badiris and Kennedy with the tackle. This now is Hodgson, first touch. With the live wire. O'Connor up the middle. Forwards tonight have been magnificent. And the offloads. Sinfield, Farrell, wide to Senior. Oh, he came back on the inside. Hodgson came back on the other side. And he should have stayed out, and Senior's look says it all. Well, what a second half the big fella from Leeds is having, Senior. That could have been a dream pass for Hodgson. And the substitute had just decided to come back on the inside. It's minute things like that make the difference between celebration or heartache. This is Lockyer, Scofforth has him, gets drilled into the ground by uh, Scofforth and Farrell. Here's Fittler, can Britain force the next score, Stevens. Well that's not the right option Eddie, there's plenty, plenty of time left out there, they've got to just uh, be patient. They can't really just try to force their hand, they've got to make sure that when there's a chance of an opportunity or a break, make sure that the pass is on. Don't panic. Australia won, you know, they've still got that commanding lead. Oh, and they have come up with a mistake. Oh, he said it from there on. Bounced off his shoulder. Last tackle though. Last one. Crowd not happy. I called them a Wigan crowd before. It's in Wigan, it's a British crowd. High kick. Well claimed by Leon Price. Now then, he fancies taking on Blacklock. He's got to stay in. And he does that. Well, to be fair, Bill Harrigan. Okay. Rubber the Green went to British way on several yeah, occasions yeah. in the first half. One went against him there, so uh, maybe it's just going to level oh. itself up. And there is what I was worried about. Fielding with the mistake. Australia have it back with Gidley. Well, when you're in the pressure cooker, you've got to be a pretty tough vegetable to go soft. And the crowd screaming at the British to get hold of Adam McDougall. Back, Jerry. They do eventually. Oh, oh, you go, you're Don't go early. Maderas to Stevens. He'll trundle it down the middle. Two. Here. Maderas again. They're 15 metres away with Johns. Jinking Johns. He gets them to within five metres now. Fittler fires the pass, Lockyer, here's Barrett. And Deacon with an important tackle, helped out by Fielding who made the mistake. And it was on Carlo. Barrett again. And Barrett, Barrett running flat, gets the ball out wide, Lyon. Connolly's got it back for Britain. And we play on, we can play the ball, ball play the man. Not the best option, perhaps, uh, from Jamie Lyon. But this has been a battle royal, hasn't it? It has. And 
Britain so close and Farrell makes a run break. Pulled down by Carlo. Did well then in the second row of Carlo to make sure that uh, he decked him down. They were coming in numbers. But they're making the breaks Great Britain which is uh, encouraging. And the surprising thing that the breaks are coming out wide on the fringes. Oh, he dropped that. Never played it. He dropped that midfielder. Yeah. Well, the mistakes really have been the difference between the two sides. Britain got off to a flying start when it was uh, Blacklock who took the ball. Really a mistake, but they did put him in touch, got the possession. And you saw a little shake of the head from a concerned David Wade. You take away those little errors. And uh, we have the opportunity. Andy Farrell now on a little bit of a nutter. I told you how to play, so I told me how to referee. Oh, you're kid. You are kid. Well, the referee and Andy Farrell having a discussion about everything has gone their way, says Andy Farrell, and Bill Harrigan has a case. Well, that will not help the cause. Uh, we've seen so often in the past that uh, Andy Farrell sometimes loses his cool, and that's not right. Oh, never played properly, and that's a knock-on as well. And we've got a foot to it. Exactly the same as over there, says Bill Harrigan. Yep. Same over there. And Here that's uh, the reason why it was silly of uh, Andy Farrell to... Seeing the referee to task. Mind you, the referee is carrying on the discussion with Andy Farrell. He just said to him, anything to say, Andy? Uh, yeah, well, concentrate, Andy, you're ten points behind. Exactly. Win, lose, a draw, Harrigan will get exactly the same wage. And he knows he's going to get uh, backed in the press, in the media, it doesn't matter, they're used to it. Both sides of the world. That's good. Of course, but the, <laughs> the problem is, is that we need leadership at this point in time. Well, and, and he will say that he is giving that by questioning the decision, I suppose. Listen, there's a way to question. You don't argue with the official. That's a bit bad. Deacon. Too early. Deacon to Peacock. Terrific Australian defence again. Johns and Jamie Lyon. A ten-point gap as we have 21 minutes remaining. Farrell goes wide to Connolly and wide to Senior. This is the danger, man. Stevens and Cairns get the British captain to ground on halfway. Connolly. Deacon. Oh, not the best kick, not the best pass. What an earth! He's penalised Australia for tackling the man without the ball. It took an eternity to drop on this football. What Fielding was thinking. Wait for behind you. He really should have body, put his body on the line. Well, Baderas was all over the top of Fielden, and Fielden lucky to get away with that. Certainly was. There's a few problems out there for the Australians. Uh, quite a few of them look hurt and wounded. Well, the way these British forwards are running, no wonder. It must be like uh, trying to stop a double decker bus at the moment. And Andy Farrell, look at that penalty count when you're taking a look at this video later. 4 1, the penalty count in Britain's favour. Sinfield. Force the pass. Well, they're ten adrift, they're in the last 20. That's a long time in a game of rugby league football. Opportunities there, you could see the not really looking, didn't realise whether Paul Wellens was there. I know they're going to start thinking about catch up football, but with only 10 points between them. If it if and it I hate to say it, again, I never thought the day had come, but I think some of these times. Australians are having to dig Shuri. deep. They're looking a bit Shuri, tired out there. Again. Yeah, they're blowing. There's no doubt about that. Well, we brought Sean McRae in midway through the first half and said it was a test match. Boy, isn't it a test match? Great arm wrestle, Eddie, this game. We've seen uh, Great Britain have a couple of chances early on and just denied by the video Sweet, ref. Mate, you um, you've got to say the, the, the Australians are just That's controlling the game fairly well. They'd like to get one more try. I think they feel they can get over the try line again. That's the ashes to them. But I've got to say with Great Britain, they've been absolutely outstanding so far and they're still very much in this game. The only thing I'd be looking for now is to keep the ball alive. The difficulty we're having with, these, with the Great Britain side is a little bit of pressure, a little bit of fatigue is causing some mistakes, but they've got to keep working and they've got to keep the ball alive. They must attack at all, at all options and that's the only way they're going to win the ball game.
Another mistake here from Field and High Challenge on Jason Stevens. Penalty to Australia takes them over the halfway line. Sheer frustration, but it gives Australia a wonderful position now. And uh, with, the again. with the experienced players out there, and especially Brad Fiddler, he knows exactly what's needed. They'll run out the six and utilize the kick, apply the pressure, they'll turn it around. Either Johns or Fiddler will be looking towards maybe a little dink into the in goal area. This is Robbie Cairns. Robbie Cairns of the Melbourne Storm, captain of the Storm in the NRL. Barrett, it goes to Fittler. Fittler ball on the inside to Kennedy. Well watched by Sinfield. Fittler again, there he is, directing traffic at the play of the ball. He's found Barrett. He goes wide and finds Johns. Johns has flicked the ball back and lucky to get away with it to Paduras. But uh, they really do support their men with the ball and they support those mistakes, the Aussies. Johns with a dab towards the in goal. Price is there. And Britain have it back. They must attack from deep. It was inevitable that uh, Johns was going to get there, got himself in a position. Could have been a flaw. It should have been. That's three. Pull back here, fellas. And as I mentioned before, uh, both point. sides, the pace of this game, it's taking its toll. Uh, normally, it's at this point where Great Britain do struggle. And I think Australia, <laughs> they're really struggling as well. Round the corner it goes, they were lucky to get away with that. That's the fifth and last, they're still inside their own 20 metres zone, the kick has to be good here. It's with the captain, and he hikes it downfield. It'll bounce, no it won't, Blacklock is underneath it. And the chase, good ball from Blacklock too. Lockyer, Fielding is there, and Fielding will rest him to the ground. With a bit of help from Jamie Peacock. He's had a huge game, hasn't he? Stuart Field, and OK, he's come up with a few errors. But he has worked over time. They all have. It's been a classic game. Been a sensational game. Full credit to both sides. They've had to dig Sorry. deep. Skills are plenty on show, but the defensive qualities from both sides. Well, can Britain's defence just stand firm here? Kennedy, that was an important little ankle tap there from Farrell. Barrett. Dummy half, it goes wide to Johns. A dab down the line from McDougal. Hodgson, you have to be quick. Oh! Dear me! That would have been a try. Gidley puts it down. And the chance to win the Ashes goes begging. Hodgson opted to try to let the ball go out rather than take it out himself so that they would get head and feed. Talk about a teasing kick from Andrew Johns. It's superb. But look at that, that was play on, that was try time, T.R.Y. And Gidley knows it, what a let off. A real let off and then such incidents match his turn. Ten points the gap, time starting to ebb away. Well that surely should have been the second try for Gidley. That would have brought a smile to my two young daughters out in Australia, Kaylee and Alyssa. They think he's one of the uh, glamour boys of rugby league. Well, they will be watching Steve-O's daughters on Channel 9. They've just seen a big mistake Terry, from Terry O'Connor. You and you let go of the ball. And I slam, you slam, got your slam, you let the ball go. Bill Harrigan making uh, it quite clear to Terry O'Connor that you've got a responsibility to hang on to the football as well. And he's right. You let it go, Terry. See, they were not attempting to go for the football. They were just slamming him to the ground. It's uh, within the rules. Incidentally, our colleagues at uh, Sky Television in New Zealand also watching this test match live this evening. Barrett pass out wide to Gidley, looking to make amends for the mistake. Senior and uh, Hodgson with the tackle. Here's McDougal. All hands to the pumps now for Great Britain. Well, he's played his part, hasn't he? Adam McDougal. Robbie Cairns now. He has saved two absolute certain tries for Britain. And the Australians were wobbling somewhat. They were being caught out wide on their right side. Badiris to Fittler, and Fittler taking on the British defence on his own. O'Connor and Fielden there, and Fittler, he's tackled, standing up on his feet. They're three metres away. Badiris to Johns, little drop of the shoulder from Johns. Great tackle from Mike Forshaw. Off the deck, Stevens, kick out wide, a tester for Hodgson. This. John 
Jones, who has come up with yet another superb kick. I was singing the praises of Adam McDougall. Sadness on the British fans. Not on this fella, though. Trent Barrett, the up-and-coming superstar. Sorry, it wasn't Johns, I don't think, that to have the kick. It was Stevens. Stevens that kicked it. My apologies to the prop forward. He's come up with a classic. What? What a great kick, but look at McDougal. Superb effort there from the experienced winger. What a try, all brought about by that man, Adam McDougal. Well, he's been provider and he has salvaged so often this Australian side in the second half. And a huge game from Adam McDougal. And a very, very important try from Trent Barrett, who was back to his best last week. And this kick from Andrew Johns, maybe to put this match out of the reach of the British heroes. He's missed this one. So 22-8. For using his feet on this occasion with a oh. superb. They got the short kick off, they palmed the ball back, but Andrew Johns was the man on the spot. Australia have it back on halfway. Badiris, Fittler, Cairns, Anderson, Forshaw, O'Connor. Tackle is complete. It is now. There was the effort. Just pops up out of nowhere, doesn't he, Andrew Johns? Here's Stevens. Good ball to Blacklock. Let's play, let's go, let's go. Good tackle by let's Joint. Badiris again. Barrett. He's had a wow of a game, hasn't he, the standoff? Slowly but surely he came into the game in the second test uh, when the game was well and truly won. Built on his confidence. Fifth and last year for Australia. He's had a wow of a night tonight as uh, Trent Barrett. Johns. As his partner, the man who's kicked Johns. Now this is a test for Leon Price. Oh, they might have scored here. No, no, he no, might have scored no. here in Astor. I don't think you'll find that it came off the Australian. He wants to check just to be certain. I think Price was beaten to the football. Yeah. Get that dive. Definitely came off uh, Jamie Lyon. So the man who uh, has become accustomed to poaching a try from uh, the kicking to the corner. This will be N-O-T-O-Y. No doubt in my mind that uh, Jamie Lyon has forced that ball forward. Well, I won't argue with you this time. No, they won't give this. Definitely came off... Uh, having a good look. Oh, they came off the arms of... Uh, of Lyon, surely. Well, they've all lined up for a 20-metre restart, so the players have made their mind up, but it's all down to David Campbell. N-O-T-R-Y. You're right. Over here. Great the master from Canterbury. His first test at Bolton uh, last week. In this series. And uh, the man they're calling the new Fittler. Oh, yeah. And back, he's uh, been denied by the video referee. Wellens is trying to get the ball away in an impossible situation, but now Britain have to chase the match. Yeah, especially with uh, just 10 minutes remaining. Linking through. He's acquitted himself well, though, as he had all throughout this season, Paul Wellens. But they can feel pretty proud of themselves, Great Britain. Yeah, it was a bit of a shambles in that uh, the effort in the second test, but boy, oh boy, this has been one of the better test matches I've seen for many a day. Yes, yeah, a real test in every sense of the word. And Wellens with a good tackle on Barrett. It uh, just could be, when you think about it, Farrell's uh, conversion that hit the post and came out and Connolly just inches away from the touchdown. And so near yet so far. Hey, it's not over yet. They've got 10 minutes to go. Here's Lockyer. Johns. Lockyer back on the inside. Ominous holes opening up for Great Britain here. They offload and they get the ball again. This is Robbie Kearns. He offloads to Stevens. And David Hodgson. Well, oh, well it will play the first. Play the knock first. Off. Well, they had a golden opportunity, did the youngster, of course, when uh, Keith Senior was at an outstanding second half. Trying to get the ball out wide and. Uh, 
the Australians now, they're full of confidence. They're forcing the pass at 22-8. They know that uh, it's an impossible situation for the British boys now. But at least they've shown the respect. They've uh, played with a lot of pride. Both sides have. Deacon to Wellens. Two, let him up, right. Here we are, have a look. Connolly, Anderson. Anderson, one of the Bradford Bulls, of course, who will be involved in our next appointment with you in the new year, February the 1st, the World Club Challenge. It's uh, Bradford Bulls against the Newcastle Knights, McAlpine Stadium. It's Friday the 1st of February. It's on Sky Sports and it's a 7.30 start. And then we'll be back with you for Super League 7. And what a start we have, the repeat of the grand final. Friday, March the 1st at 7.30, also on Sky Sports. So we will be gone after this, but hopefully not forgotten. And we'll be back with you early in the new year. And let's hope that the Bulls can follow on from St Helens and give the British game a, a terrific start to the campaign, just as uh, the Saints did last year. Well, the guys can hold their heads up uh, in this particular effort. It has been quite superb. But yet again, the, uh, the skills and perhaps the fitness levels of Australia has paid its price. They really are superb world champions. They are, and the, uh, the new breed is uh, almost mirrored there by Braith and Astor. Jason Stevens off the deck to Lockyer. They're playing with such confidence now. Oh, beautiful offload from Cairns. Lockyer is there. Man on his inside is Barrett. He's in for a second. Barrett's in under the sticks. The Ashes are on their way to Australia again. There is no doubt now. And Great Britain's brave effort has all come to nothing and that is a huge disappointment for David Waite. Superb Jim offload out. with the try. Well, he's capped off a fine night. Good work amongst the forwards, but none better than this. This is an outstanding offload there from the prop forward, Robbie Cairns. Lockyer, as he does so often, chimes in at the very last moment. And Barrett just adds icing onto a pretty solid cake, it has to be said. The British fans heading for the exits, they know it's uh, all over now. Fittler is going to take this conversion, change of kicker. And uh, it's in his uh, last test match. He hasn't kicked a goal for Australia yet, but he's going to enter the record books if he kicks this. <laughs> he just oh, about yes. made it. Yeah. Well, a big smile on the face of the Australian. Admire about the Australians. They support the man, they support the mistake and the opportunity and the possibility of a loose ball as well. Yeah, they snap it up. They're, they're pretty quick and efficient, but this man's had a fine game too. McDougall's been magnificent yeah. tonight. I mean, Let's the go. things that he did when it was uh, Senior making the nice, break. Nice, 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 it looked nice. like they were coming back on the inside. That was the incident where uh, Paul Johnson got injured. But he just read it ever so well, and that shows you when you need the experience. Great oh, kick. what a kick again. A great kick, and, uh, well, Price Kicked just in. managing to put Jamie yeah. Lyon off. Well, the Australian kicking game has, uh, has been very good indeed. Our game fell apart very early in the piece. Green ball. And that must have been a kick from Price, so uh, going to be head and feet, surely, to the Australians who may finish off with a flourish. It would be a shame because uh, the scoreline will certainly not reflect the effort from both sides. No, Blacklock. Blacklock looking for the try. Oh, he should have passed, passed out wide. wide there. Just to crown McDougall's evening, Barrett. Well, Great Britain don't deserve to be on the end of a hiding, and it will look like a hiding if they get over for another try. This is Barrett. Hodgson did enough. Well, they took the gamble, but uh, Adam McDougall realises that he should have finished this game with uh, a four-pointer when uh, Nathan Blacklock decided to go for glory on his own. And he knows it. I don't think he's uh, too unimpressed about that pass either. Now, if he'd have uh, got a decent pass, Adam McDougall would have joined the elite band of uh, Aussies to have scored in every test match in an, se an Ashes series. 
And this guy has failed to do that. Gary Connolly. It's amazing. So many tests. And he's yet to come up with his first British try. And even right to the end, this Australian defence is far too strong. Well, he has, uh, he has given it all, David Waite. He was a kangaroo tourist in 1973 when the Ashes first left these shores after the 1970 victory. This marvellous run of success that uh, Australia have had since then began with David Waite as a kangaroo. And Hodgson's done well. He's got the ball away there from McDougall. Now, can Britain give us something to, to think about during the uh, long winter months that lie ahead? Well, as we've seen war for 31 years in the Test Series, the Australians, they play right up to the final whistle. Even though it's a comfortable lead, they're still putting in the big hits. And they want to make sure that the celebrations will be absolutely superb. What a send-off for a fine player, Brad Fiddler. This is the end of his international career. Baderas swooping on the mistake from uh, Andy Farrell and Chris Joint. Well, 28-8 is respectable. Anything over 30 would be an insult to the British effort. That ball finds its way to touch. Well, they're certainly trying for him, aren't they? Aaron McDougall to uh, add to that list of scoring in every test. Been a great game, though, Steve-O, to be fair, this. Yeah, first, I th thoroughly enjoyed it, didn't First uh, was enjoyable, second was... Uh, forgettable. Yes, and this has been right, magnificent. Go, 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 go. Great test. Seconds down. Sounds just like this. a song. Yeah, just the scoreline that's gone the wrong way for Great Britain, but it's... Uh, well, at, le at least this week they've been singing from the same hymn sheet. Yes. Been over the line a couple of times as well, Great Britain, but uh, the gods weren't smiling. Big hoof downfield by Sculpthorpe, Blacklock's after it, Price is with him, Price gets Whoa. the tackle in. Here we go, Gary. Well, we have uh, 35 seconds of this year of 2001 of Rugby League to go Two. on the field. Two. Well, there's been an interesting tussle, hasn't it, between the two number twos, Blacklock and Leon Price, uh, both sides feeling that perhaps they were a little bit of a weak link. Plenty, uh, plenty, plenty of work to do. Plenty of work written, though, to build on for the future. This is a, a fairly young side. Oh, hey, look at this. Have a look. Well, they were positive, and of course, uh, no doubt the daggers will be out of David Wade, who, uh, for all three tests, has avoided having a recognised hooker. Well, that's not his fault. He only can play what he has dealt. And that's it. The Ashes go home with Brad Fittler and the 2001 Kangaroos. The Guinness series ends 2-1 in Australia's favour. A familiar scoreline yet again. Trent Barrett with two tries has had a huge influence. Andy Farrell suffers defeat at the JJB Stadium for the first time in over a year. And it's the Ashes that will be heading south again with the green and golds of this uh, 2001 kangaroo party and Fittler goes out on a high as he planned Andy Farrell will come back and try again but the disappointment is there for all to see Deacon played his part the forwards for Great Britain were magnificent little doubt about that they worked over time and the Australian pack realized that too Bill Arthur is with the man of the moment Brad Fittler Brad, you'd have wanted to end your career, international career with a tough game. I think you got it. That half time, all the boys, we all read that how, how good a game it was, you know, and I think that first draft after half time hurt them and they had a couple of disallowed, which were pretty close. So uh, I think it was my night tonight. A few things went our way, and you know, it's just been a pleasure. And you know, the Great Britain were great this year. I thought they got a great side and they had a lot of players out too, which, you know, didn't help. Well, I mean, your international career goes back 10 years. Would this be one of the toughest test matches you've played in in that time? I think so. I think uh, there's a lot of pressure on it, especially after losing the first. And we knew we'd been there before, but it's always easy looking in hindsight. So we worked pretty hard and, you know, we didn't have, we didn't give up a good time either. We really enjoyed ourselves and got out now to be with these young boys because it's a shame they didn't get the seven-week tour but you get to see the whole of England. Well, we've seen Trent Barrett score a couple of tries tonight. Are you confident you're leaving the Australian side in, in pretty good shape? Mate, uh, 
he more pushed me to lock. I didn't, I didn't leave for him. He always pushed me to lock. So he's a great player. And he's, he's only going to get better. Now that conversion was significant, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was pretty close till then. And we noted that. So they, in case they scored four tries, so significant for you though, wasn't it? They should be first goal for Australia. <laughs> so you know, I, just, I sculled it too. It just made it. So I was very happy. But what does it mean to you to round off your career with an Ashes success like this? It is. There's uh, a lot of emotions at the moment, and just very happy. Just. Looking forward to going back and having a quiet beer and really enjoying the moment. Thanks very much, Brad. Thank you. Alongside is the man of the match, Trent Barrett. And Trent, there you go. And what a game that was all round. Yeah, it was. You know, it was tight at the start. We didn't expect nothing less from him. And, you know, it was a great game. They've certainly improved and they're, um, you know, we've certainly got to turn up to beat them. It was a proper test match, wasn't it? it? had everything. Disallowed tries, a couple of scraps. Yeah, definitely. No, but full credit to our blokes. We're up against it. We lost the first one and copped a bit of flack, but um, along with a few injuries in the second one. So, you know, it's just great. I love coming over here and playing, and hopefully we'll be back here in a few more years. When you think of all the will-they-won't-they they talk before you came, you must be glad you came in the end. Oh, definitely. You know, it was a bit it was a bit hard for us. We were coming, and then we weren't. And, but uh, certainly glad we came now. It's a great experience for us. We've got a lot of young blokes. We've got a very young side. And it's great to send Brad Fittler out a winner. Well done. All right, so I just say good day. Everyone at home, Mum and Dad, Kylie, love you. See you when I get home. Thank you. Won't be long and he'll be home. He's the man of the match, Trent Barrett, the uh, man of the Guinness Test Series. Almost inevitably, I suppose, is Andrew Johns. Disappointment, though, for the British boys. You can see that. There's Kevin Sinfield. He will come again. So will Leon Price. Andy Farrell, Keith Senior, they're the bedrock of the future. In the background, Mike Forshaw, he announced his, uh, his retirement from international football after the World Cup last year, and uh, maybe, maybe now he will pull the curtain down on his uh, international career. But if they've all gone out bravely. Well, I think the fans can leave uh, the stadium and be very, very happy. This fellow won't, though. Andy Farrell with Bill. Andy, I don't think the supporters here tonight can complain about a lack of effort from your side, can they? Um, we had effort last week, Bill, you know. I thought we, um, we played with a lot of effort all the way through the series, but um, that's not good enough against the best in the world, you know. Um, you know, at times we, we look very good when we're going forward with the ball, we look strong, and then, you know, for some reason uh, we all get a bit impatient and try to do something something special, and um, that's not the way to win big games. And, you know, they, they just plug away uh, all the way through the series, really, and. Um, when the opportunities come, the, the, the lethal really, and uh, that, that showed in the second half. Well, you're going to look at the tape of this and see your conversion hit the post, two tries disallowed, a, a fingernail in either of them. I mean, that's going to be heartbreaking, isn't it? Well, uh, I mean, I think the better, the better team won on the day, Bill, and, uh, you know, you get decisions against you and you get decisions for you, and that's rugby league, you know, I'm sure they would have liked a few decisions go their way as well today. So, um, you know, the, the best side won on the day, and, um, you know, we've... We've got to get back to the drawing board and hopefully we can get some more internationals on the board next year again. Thanks for talking to us, Andy. Well, cheers. It must be difficult to lead uh, your country into uh, a losing situation, but sadly, that's all too familiar for Great Britain in the recent past, Steve. Well, it is, but uh, I think, uh, as I just mentioned before, we had the interview there, is that most of these fans have got value for money. And they've witnessed uh, a fine Australian outfit who was uh, too good on the night, too good throughout the series, as they have been for 31 years, and uh, that's one heck of a shiner, isn't it? That's, Adam McDougall uh, will take the scars of battle home, won't he? He certainly it's, will. It will be, though, a, a wonderful um, tonic for Chris Anderson, who is at this moment undergoing tests in hospital, we understand, leaving the, uh, the arena here with chest pains at half-time. Yeah, let's hope that let's everything hope goes okay. well. Yeah. Yeah. But a, a marvellous tonic for him that he's going home with the Ashes. And I think it'll be a night that uh, Adam McDougall will remember as well, because uh, there was a bit of a point in that second half when the Aussies were wobbling, and it was the experienced McDougall that steadied the ship with two absolutely superb cover tackles that denied Great Britain a chance to uh, start taking control of this game. Wasn't to be, as you say, it's been the same story for a long time, but I think everybody connected with rugby league throughout the world can feel proud that, A, we got this series on and that we have been served up a treat of rugby league football. Yes, it's been magnificent. Andy Farrell will uh, 
lick the wounds of disappointment. So will his coach, David Waite, who goes there to have a word. The first Australian coach to uh, coach Great Britain. I suppose, inevitably, there will be question marks, but uh, no one could have been more passionate than David Waite in this series. No, I made it quite clear that he had a five-year uh, plan. Uh, this is just part of it. And there are things that he will pick over, things that he will improve upon, I am sure. But uh, he has laid down the foundation. And I think he'll be going through the youngsters in the Great Britain squad that uh, maybe the Australians are not as mighty as what they have been for several years. Well, the, uh, the presentation at last gets underway, first of all, to uh, Bill Harrigan and his two touch judges. Bill Harrigan, to be fair, ref this third test even-handedly from start to finish. There can be no complaints from that point of view. And here's the man of the match, Trent Barrett, who will pick up the check. Trent Barrett, man of the match. And uh, he will be followed onto the uh, podium by the man of the series, Andrew Johns. Three years on his contract to go in Australia with his club. And he told me last week after the second test he really fancies a chance of playing in the Super League. So that will alert clubs in this country over the next 24 months, I'm sure. And the award for the man of the series, ladies and gentlemen. Andrew Johns, man of the series. The series selected by the press is Andrew Johns. And now Australia will come up to collect the trophy. And they will go home with the Guinness Trophy, but more importantly, they will go home with the Ashes. Absolutely secure again. And it will be uh, a wee while longer yet before Great Britain has the opportunity to rest them back. Brad Fittler win. Or Brad Fittler and Australia win the Ashes of 2001. And fully deserved. They're a little bit underdone, obviously uh, they arrived late in this country, but uh, full credit to them. They've played some outstanding rugby league football. Well, it's all a little bit of an anticlimax from a, a British point of view, of course. But uh, pictures, I'm sure, that uh, the Australians watching at home will be well pleased to view time and time again. The Ashes, as far as they're concerned, are back in their rightful home. Britain will have something to say about that in the years to come. Some but another successful one for the Australian Kangaroos, retaining the Ashes with this 28-8 victory over Great Britain. Lockyer, Gidley, Myers and Trent Barrett got two tries. Andrew Johns kicked three from five. Brad Fittler finishing his rep career with one from one. His first goal for Australia and for Great Britain, Paul Johnson scored after a couple of minutes. Andy Farrell kicked three from three. Brad Fittler's had plenty of disappointment this season at club level and also for New South Wales, but what a... A great way to finish his representative career leading this side and well done to Brad Fittler. The only concern out of this game, as you may have heard the commentators mention, uh, Chris Anderson, the Australian coach, has been taken to hospital with a recurrence of the chest pains that did put him in hospital during the week. In fact, Phil Gould, you got a phone call during the course of the commentary alerting you to that fact. Yeah, uh, the NRL partnership member and Roosters chairman Nick Politis has been in touch with the ARL chairman Colin Love who travelled to the hospital with Chris Anderson. They said he was in some discomfort leading into half time. Earlier in the week he had some chest pains and it was diagnosed as muscular. Uh, Chris actually felt good enough to go and have a game of golf yesterday but just before half time you saw him leave his seat. Uh, he went downstairs, they took him by ambulance to the hospital. Colin Love is with him. He said he's comfortable in hospital and under the best of care, so our best wishes go out to him. That will temper the celebrations in the Australian dressing room uh, after this, and we have for uh, Chris and his family that everything works out well. Uh, a great test series, back to the football, and uh, superb performance by Australia to wrap it up today and uh, continue their domination. But uh, again, our best wishes go out to Chris and his family. They do indeed. Just quickly on the game, over the... Uh the three matches is probably one 10 minute crucial period which was in the second half today where really Great Britain had an opportunity. Australia got the early try in the second half but then a couple of disallowed tries and not taking 
advantage of opportunities hurt them badly. They had us rocking, there's no doubt about that. And I thought Adam McDougall was particularly strong during that period, got back in cover defence uh, and staved off a couple of situations. And they had some very near misses. Uh, uh, try under the post, there could have well been a try, but uh, you know, that's the way it goes in big time football. And as Andy Farrell uh, said in his interview after the game, they made too many mistakes under pressure uh, to put enough pressure on this great Australian team. And Australia just methodically went about their business. Trent Barrett outstanding. Mm. And, uh, as Brad Fittler says, he leaves the number six jersey in very good hands now. Well, end of a very good series. Thanks for coming in, Gus. I'll see you on the golf course. Can't wait for it. And can't <laughs> wait for the new year and the football to begin. Exactly right. Of course, that 20-point victory does finish our rugby league season. Plenty of summer sports coming up in the coming months. Don't forget, later today...
This is me, learning a lot in the army of the future. This is me too, driving a tank in tomorrow's army. It's a satisfying career with good prospects. You'll learn how to give orders, how to come out on top. In tomorrow's army, you work with the very latest technology. Above all, you'll see hundreds of different countries at first hand. So sign up with the army that's going places. Two points against. <laughs> right, it's, uh, it's a little bit lively today, but I'll be. Um... <laughs> yeah, so, how have you been? Uh, how, have you been how have you been keeping anyway, Mr. Oh, fine! <laughs> Airlines like WA15 for Brisbane. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the flight you're on. Uh, we're now flying at 30,000 feet and we're doing approximately 520 knots. And, oh, oh my god, oh my god, number two engines failed. Massive depressurization. We're losing height, ladies and gentlemen. We're going down. We're going to die. Ah! Ah! <laughs> no, but seriously, ladies and gentlemen. This summer, Mr. and Mrs. Watkins set off on holiday without playing their television races. <laughs> the Gilbert family forgot to pay their license too, so we sent them a little reminder <laughs> on their wedding anniversary. It's no use running away. We're a large organisation and we've got plenty of time, as Mr. Aylett of Basildon found out. So get the license. It's cheaper than a funeral. <laughs> of chainsaws, thousands of bloodthirsty slant-eyed seamen, and only three and a half whales left to go. That was a clip of Soft Cell live on Whistle Test last year. And now for all the frustrated wimps around, we've got Mark in the studio tonight. Hello, Mark. Hi there, Annie. Now, Mark, I must ask the question on everybody's lips. <laughs> When's the new album due out? Um, yesterday. <laughs> no, no, there's been a lot of hassle with the recording company. Uh, I wanted to bring out a single album. Well, they wanted a double with some old live uh, cabaret recordings, which would be a real rip -off. Right. Uh, so that's what we're doing. <laughs> What you're calling the album, isn't it? A real rip-off. <laughs> now, Mark, you've received macho acclaim for Tainted Love, but uh, lots of people in the music press have been saying that, in fact, you're a pretentious little jerk and um, <laughs> that you sing out of tune and that, in fact, you have no control over anything you do. How would you answer that? <laughs> Sorry? Balance. 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 
Bollocks. 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 Right, well, thank you, Mark Orman. <laughs> He's about to defend his toughest case yet in the United States. You commit a crime in the state of Florida. You will pay the price. Kavanaugh QC thrust into the turmoil of death row. I never owned a gun. Where he's both detective. I made the 911 call that day. And lawyer. You're sure about that? Confronting corruption. You're out of your mind. Then the ultimate bombshell. I don't know what to do. Don't miss this extraordinary Kavanaugh QC. Wednesday, 9.30 on Prime. Announcing 40 Winks 20% off sale. 20% off every inner spring set. 20% off every bedroom suite. 20% off every bedroom suite on the floor. 20% off every inner spring set. Absolutely no exceptions. Hurry, ends this weekend. Wink, wink, 40 Winks! Look at him go. Brian Wen's running. Down. He's run a thousand races, he's hit 50, and the body's slowly failing. Which is good news for you, because that means he now has more time to spend on giving you the best sports shoe fit, the best sports shoe range, and the best sports shoe advice in town. How's your toe feel? Feel OK? Yep. The Runner's Shop. Great service. I could still beat you any time, fella. You just don't always get it with a smile. Retractable, folding arm and patio awnings, Venetians, security doors, grills and shutters. Tear up all quotes. At John Watson, our seven-day sale is on now. Massive discounts for seven days only. John Watson, blinds and awnings, 6280-4443. like the planet to pay for all of that. Support retailers who support RAP, the Waste Reduction Accreditation Program. This man is deaf. Unlike you or I, he cannot hear the phone ringing even though it's only 18 inches away from him. That is something wrong <laughs> because a team of research students at Guy's Hospital have invented this device. The audio-visual sonic communication system with this, a microprocessor base. <laughs> it enables a flash bulb suspended here to be connected to an aerial receiver here. Whenever the phone where the transmitter is housed begins to ring. So now when this discreet accessory is worn, even a deaf person knows when the phone is ringing. Sensational. The president-elect Ronald Reagan set the record straight for journalists today, telling them that when he spoke of Nancy Reagan, he was of course referring to his wife, not his son. And the Vatican has again denied rumours that the Pope is suffering from bad eyesight. Meanwhile, His Holiness landed at Rome Airport, where he seemed to have some difficulty in locating the red carpet. <laughs> The American space agency, NASA, has started sending its trainee astronauts to Bruce Forsyth's one-man show in order to acclimatize them to a place which has no atmosphere. 